Let's take a look at creating, updating, and extracting zip files using PowerShell. So first off, I've got a list of variables that I'll be using for this demo. Go ahead and add them in. And secondly, there are two ways to manage zip files using PowerShell. Before v5, we had to use .NET, and since v5, we can use some built-in commandlets. Let's take a look at .NET. So we need .NET 4.5, and we'll have to add the system.io.compression.file system type. And when we do that, we have access to the system.io.compression libraries. So to create a zip file using .NET, we can do it two ways. The first way is we can create it from a directory. So in this case, I have the 2zipdir, and I'm adding it to the zip file 1 path using the create from directory method. And then looking at the contents of that zip file, which is what this next line does, we can see that it has file A and file B, which were in the 2zipdir. The second way to do it is using the open method, which has the second parameter of mode, and in this case, using the create option. And this creates a zip file. If we look at the contents of that zip file, there's nothing in it because we just created it. We're going to go ahead and dispose of that variable. So it closes the lock on that zip file. So the next thing is updating an existing zip file. So first off, we can define a compression level. In this case, I'm saying the fastest compression level. The other options are no compression or optimal. And secondly, I'm going to open that zip file using the open method and give it the mode of update, since we're going to be updating that zip file. And we can see that there's nothing currently in it, so this is the zip file 2 that we created but didn't add anything to. And then using the create entry from file method in the zip file extensions, we need to give it the zip file, the file we're going to be using, the name of the file, and the compression level. And the compression level here is optional. I'm just defining it as an example. And then we can again look at the contents of that zip file and see that it has file1.txt. So then there are also two ways to extract zip files using .NET. The first way is to extract it to a directory. So I'm going to use the open method again, this time use the read mode, and then use the zip file extensions to extract to directory method. In this case, we need to pass it the zip file and the path to extract it to. So now if we look at the contents of that extract path, we can see that it has file1.txt. So I'm going to clear those out for the next example. So there's also an extract to file method, and this lets us extract specific files out of a zip file. I've got two examples for that. The first one, we can hard code which entry we want to use. In this case, I'm saying the first one, telling it where to extract it to and whether or not to overwrite. So in this case, I'm saying overwrite true. So now if we look at the contents of the extract path, you can see I have the extracted file onetxt The other way I want to look at is using the pipeline. So if we pipe the zip.entries to the where object, we can actually filter for the files that we want to extract. And then again, we'll pipe that to the same zip file extensions, extract a file method, and give it the name that we want to extract it to and whether or not we want to overwrite. And now looking at the extract path, we can see that we have an additional file, so the file1.txt. So now in PowerShell version 5, we have the archive module. So we can use compress archive commandlet to create zip files. So in this case, I'm creating it from a directory. So I have a 2-zip dir, and I'm giving it the destination path of the zip file 1. So running that, I can now look at the contents of that zip file and see that it has file A and file B. So we can also create zip files passing file names or an array of file names. So in this case, I'm passing file 1, file 2, and telling it to put it in zip file 2. And looking at the contents of that file, we can see that it has file 1 and file 2. So then to update an existing zip file, we use the update switch. So in this case, I'm giving it a second directory, adding it to the zip file 1. And now looking at the contents of that zip file, we can see that it also now has file C and D. And then of course, we can also add files in using the same method. And then looking at zip file 2, we can see that it now has that additional file3.txt. And then finally, extracting. We have the expand archive commandlet, and that lets us extract a zip file to a specified path. So in this case, the extract path. And if I look at the contents of extract path, you can see that I have two directories, zip and zip2, and then each of them has two files in it. So I'll clear that out, and then we can look at the contents of zip file2 by extracting it to the extract path. And we can see 
that that had file one, file two, and file three. And that is how you create, update, and extract zip files using PowerShell.